What we're going to talk about in this webinar is going to be the new Edge calendar. The calendar was added in January of this year. So the first thing you're going to need to know is that your Edge version, which is in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, needs to be 20.0.0.114 or higher. So if you're on a version from this year, you should have the calendar tab in your system. If you don't remember the numbers or remember where to look for the numbers, it's really, really simple to tell if you have the calendar in your system because there will be a tab at the top that says calendar. If you have it, it is active. There is no setup that needs to be done to activate the calendar or to show things on the calendar. There's actually no system options for the calendar whatsoever. There is a security option on associates for calendar, which just allows people to change the actual physical settings in the calendar. So the first time you hit the calendar button, it will open up the calendar and it's going to populate your calendar with every date that's already in the system. So there's gonna be dates for birthdays and anniversaries. If you're using associate tasks, there's gonna be due dates for associate tasks. Every service job, whether it be a repair, custom, special order, or appraisal, has a due date. And we are also going to be displaying your appointments. So all of those things will show up on the calendar. Before we get into the actual elements that are on the calendar, we're going to talk a little bit about the navigation of the calendar and the setup of the calendar. On the left-hand side, in the very top, is a little refresh button. The calendar refreshes itself every five minutes. So if someone goes out right now, does a point of sale, and has a repair job that's marked as due today, the next time the calendar refreshes, which is every five minutes, instead of having three jobs due today, that would jump up to four. So as the calendar is open, it does reset itself every five minutes to make sure it has the newest data. If, for whatever reason, you want to refresh the calendar on your own because you know that three or four jobs are just taking in, yeah. You can hit the refresh button and that will go out and that will repopulate your calendar with the newest information. Below the refresh is a little arrow to the left. That is for your navigation panel. So this little navigation panel on the left, if you wanted to minimize that so you could see more of your calendar, you could do that. When you hit the arrow to the right, it just reopens your navigation panel. The first thing in the navigation panel is the calendar. Right now we are on May 1st, that's why it's blue. But if I wanted to take a look at April 1st, I can click on April 1st and it would show me the things that were due on April 1st and appointments and things like that. So you can move dates by just clicking on the calendar. If I wanted to look at May's calendar, I could use the arrows here and it brings me to May. So if I wanted to see what May 13th looks like or what May 15th looks like or maybe even May 4th, I can do that. You can also click on the month and the year at the top. The month, that first one will open up the months for the year. If you click on the year, it'll bring up the year picker. So if I want to go back to today, I could just click back to today. Below the calendar are the elements that can be shown on the calendar. Birthdays, anniversaries, appointments, tasks, repairs, custom, special order, appraisal, and job tasks. We'll talk about each one of these when we get to those little tiles. What you need to know here, though, is if I didn't want to see something. So for whatever reason, I did not want to see custom on this. I can uncheck the custom and those tiles will disappear. When I click them again, they will come back. So this is just controlling what your what which elements you're seeing on the calendar. Below that on my copy I have one drop down. That drop down is for associates. By default, I'm showing you everything for all associates. So all active things for today are showing up because I have all associates chosen. However, if Tom was coming in and Tom wanted to just see his things that need to be done today or what's going on, 
he could narrow the calendar to only his stuff. And then again, if I want to go back, I just go back to all associates. So an associate can come into the calendar and see everything that they need. And again, we're going to talk about all those tiles and explain what they are once we get past the setup stuff. Below all associate or below the associates picker, if you are a multi-store, by default, whatever store you're at, that's the store you're looking at. So if I'm a three-store chain and I have and I'm at store two, my calendar would be narrowed to store two by default. However, there will be a drop-down. I can choose store one, I can choose store two. I can choose store three, so I can look at any individual store's calendar. Or, just like on Associates, I can say all stores. And I will see all stores together. Above the actual details of the calendar, you have your view picker. So we have day, week, and month. So when you're on day, it shows you a single day's calendar. As you scroll down or scroll up, you'll see the different hours in that day. If I go to week, it gives me a week view. Still have my times on the left. If I scroll up or down, I'll go through that day. Month, when I look at it, it doesn't show the time by default. It just shows you the things that are currently on that day. If any one of the weeks has more options than you can see on the calendar, you will see the little drop down there. When I click on that, it will show you everything else that's on that day. And again, each one of these things is giving you a number to let you know what the total number is for that day. When you're in this view, you do not have to use the calendar to move around. So if I minimize that, there are arrows at the top and it moves you by whatever period you're looking at. So I'm looking at daily, so if I hit next, it's going to bring me to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. If I want to go back to today, I go back to today. If I'm in the week range, my week range is all calendar based, so it's going to be Sunday to Saturday. So I'm looking at this week right now. If I hit next, I'm going to see next week. If I hit next, I go to the following one. If I hit today, it brings me back to this week. Same thing with month. By default, I'm looking at May. If I hit next, I'm going to look at June. If I go one more, I'm at July. And again, if I go back to today, it brings me back to this month. If you were in the day view and you didn't have your calendar open on the left, there is a date picker here, which brings up the calendar. And if I wanted to go to May 10th, I can go to May 10th. There's one more setup we're going to talk about before we get into the details that are on the calendar. And that's the little gear in the top right hand corner. And this is the actual settings for the calendar. You do need to have security to be able to get into the calendar settings. The first thing you have on calendar settings is the font color. If for whatever reason I wanted my font to be white, I can do that. You can also change the individual color blocking for each element on the calendar. So if I didn't like this bright yellow for repairs, I could change that to a completely different color. So if I wanted to go with that tealish color, I could choose that. So you can change the color of the font and the color blocking for each of your elements. <clears throat> Next to each element is a checkbox. And that checkbox is whether or not you want to show them by default. So when you first open the calendar, what do you want to have set to show? Currently, everything is set. But if any time I open the calendar, I didn't want appraisals to show for whatever reason, I can uncheck that. And then once I open the calendar the next time, by default, appraisals will not be shown. I could still go to that left-hand side control panel and check appraisals to show them. So this is what's controlling the defaults that show up on the calendar. When we look at the elements of the calendar, you're going to see that there is jobs due, which is everything that's due that day. But then there's also overdue. Besides overdue jobs, which are jobs you haven't done, there's also overdue pickups. So these are jobs that were March just completed in our system, but the customer hasn't picked up yet. 
And what this is asking is how many days do you consider a job overdue if a customer hasn't picked it up? So mine is set to seven days. So anything that was marked as done last week is going to show up as overdue this week. Today, I should say, at least. Okay, you can change that to any number of days that you'd like. And then the last thing we have on setup, every day of the calendar is going to show you birthdays and anniversaries. You have the ability of filtering the calendar to an individual associate. So when we're filtering by associate, how do you want birthdays and anniversaries to work? There's three options. Those can show up for the assigned associate. On customer record, on the other keys tab, there's always been an option for assigning an associate there. If you're doing that, and if you've been doing that, that's what you want to do, assigned associate. And it will only bring up the birthdays and anniversaries for me if my name is marked as the associate on the other keys tab. The other two options for occasion associate are last transaction and last merchandise associate. These fields are new. They were added in the first release of 20, which again was 200114. Every time a point of sale transaction happens, these fields get updated automatically without anyone having to do anything. When you're at point of sale, if you sell an item and you hit done, the customer's record will update with your ID as the transaction and merchandise associate because you rang the sale, you, you finished the sale, and there was an item on it. Merchandise associate will only update if you sell an item. Transaction associate will update anytime you hit done at a point of sale. So if I'm taking a layaway payment, even if I didn't start the layaway, I am still the last transaction associate because I was the last one that interacted with them at point of sale. If a sale is split, if you're using the share button, the primary associate is the one that gets updated. The primary associate on a split sale is the person, the person whose name is entered first on the share screen. So whoever's name is first, that's going to update either transaction or merchandise or both. So you get to decide how you want those birthdays and anniversaries to show. So I'm going to leave mine as last transaction, and I'm going to hit save. So now when we came back, you'll notice that all of my writing updated to white, because that's what I changed my font to, and my bright yellow for repairs turned into that tealish green. So those are all the settings of the calendar. But now what we're going to talk about is what does the calendar show? So if we go to a week, we're looking at this whole week. What you're going to notice is that the first row that's there always shows up every day. It doesn't matter whether it's past or future. So every single day will show any birthdays, anniversaries, and tasks if there was tasks due. Okay, so we can pick any day throughout the weeks and we'll see those. Every day from today into the future, so not backwards but forward, will also show the middle line, which is things that are due that day. So if there is something that's due that day, you will see it on that second line. So most of my stuff doesn't have, most of my days do not have due. But if I go one more, maybe one more, you'll see that this day, Sunday the 17th, has a custom job due that day. So the first line shows on everything, which is our anniversaries, birthdays, and tasks. The due line, all due jobs, will show up on today and the future. The only day that will ever show this third line of options is today. The only time something can be overdue is today because someone may come in and pick it up today, so it's not going to be overdue tomorrow. So overdues will only show on the calendar for today. 
appointments, they show for when the appointment was. So if I went back a couple of weeks, oops, actually last week, you'll see there was an appointment there. So appointments will show up even when they're passed on the day that they were done. So I'm going to go back to the day. And now we're going to take a look at each one of these tiles and why the calendar is so helpful and allows you to do things without having to think. So without having to run a report, without having to look at anything, I know I have 21 anniversaries today and I have 22 birthdays today. I know that because the tile tells me. If I want to see who those people are that have birthdays today, all I would have to do is double click the calendar. Or sorry, double click, click the tile. So if I double clicked on wedding anniversaries, it's going to show me my 21 people that have an anniversary today. The occasion lists that come up from the calendar are all gonna look the same. You're gonna have a customer ID, customer name, spouse, if there is one, email, and phone number. All of the columns are sortable. All you'd have to do is click on that column and it will resort by that column. These are the new list screens. So besides sorting, these list screens also give you the option to filter the screen. That's what the little funnel next to each title is. So if I wanted to filter this list by only the people that had email, I can go down and I can say, is not empty. When I close that filter, my list will be narrowed to only the counts that have an email address. If I wanna put it back to the all list, I just click back on the filter and I say clear filter. And I'm back to my list of 21 customers. There are check boxes on the left. By default, when you open it, it's all checked. If I wanted to uncheck them, I could. The check boxes are going to control the buttons at the top. So from this screen, you can do certain things with these lists. So if I just wanted to see the customer, you could just double click and it will bring you directly to that customer's record. Also, if you were to click on anyone and then hit see customer, the same thing would happen. Now these three buttons are action buttons. They're gonna do something for us. So the first one is email. So no matter what you have checked, first of all, the only things that I can send email to are the ones that actually have email addresses checked as preferred. So even though I have four people checked right now and I'm gonna click email, the only one that's actually gonna get an email is this one because it's the only one that actually has an email on file. So from the screen, I can click email and it's gonna bring up the Edge email editor. So I can put a subject, I can create my email, I can add attachments if I want to. There are merge fields, so I can drop in their first name, so it will fill in automatically. And if there was an email going out to multiple people, just so you know, the Edge is always sending out individual emails to each person. So this one would say, Dear Lenny. The next one would say, Dear Jess. You do not need to set them individually. As long as you're using these keywords, it drops that name in there. Once you've set up a, a birthday email or anniversary email that you like, you can go to presets and save those settings. So the next time you do this, you would just go to presets and you would say load defaults. It would pop your previous email in there. You can make adjustments if you want to. And then once you clicked OK, it would send an email to each person that has an email address that you have checked. The email, the check boxes are also going to work with group mailings. So right from this list, you can create a group or mailing list. So I have four people chosen. I can either choose an existing list, and if I do, it will ask me, do I want to replace it or append? So we'll add those people to it, or it will replace that list with these people. Or I can create a new list at the bottom by typing a new name. And then those four people will be added to that list. So now I can use that group mailing list later for a mailing, for a report, for anything that I want. The other thing you could do from this list is you can go to the customer list. And that's just gonna bring up these four customers in a customer list, just like you did a find. Everything that you normally have option to do on a customer list will come up. So when that list comes up, 
I can say show only my preferred contacts. So instead of having 12 rows, when I click show only preferred, it will break it down to the four people that are there. They'll only have one row per person because it's only showing one contact per contact type. Also from this list, I can double click and open them up just like I can from the other list. I can right click and I can export. I can right click and I can print. So you have your full option that you would normally have on your list screen. If you're taking pictures of your customers, you can even go to photo view. So the anniversary list gives you the option of emailing, creating a group mailing list or adding to one, or bringing up a customer list. You can always see the customer. You can sort and group by any one of the things on the columns. Same thing goes for birthdays. Birthdays is the exact same list screen and you have all the same options. So when you double click on the birthday tile and you see your list of 22 people, you're going to still get the option to email, to make a group mailing list or to make a customer list. So there's really no difference between those interaction screens. But now instead of having to run reports to know whose birthday is today, what's going on, all you have to do is go to the calendar and click on them and you'll have your options to email them to create a list or to get to the customer list right from the calendar screen without having to go anywhere else. Now remember, birthdays and anniversaries show up on every day. So if you wanted to send out an email today for everyone's birthday who is next Friday, you would just go to your week, you'd go to next week, you would choose Friday, and, oops, I was adding a count, adding a, there we go. And you could double click on birthdays and it would bring your list of 22, 27 birthdays for next Friday. And again, you can send them an email right from there. You do not have to send the emails the day of the birthday. You can always choose whatever day you want. Now we have tasks. Today's tasks will show every task that's actually due today and every task that's overdue. So I have a lot of tasks that were due before today that are showing up because they have not been closed yet. So the only ones I'll see, I will see all of my todays, but then I will see every single thing before today. Just like the other lists, it's an interactive list. So if I click on this one, I can double click or I click, click view task. I can also say only show me, let's say I only want to see the ones for John. I can filter by that. You can also click on a task and say complete. And it'll ask you who you are because I'm logging who's completing the task. And then it will mark that task as complete. If the person creating the task required you to put notes, it would have popped it open at that point saying you need to enter notes first. The middle row are all of your things that are due today for services. So repair, custom, special order appraisal. We're gonna talk about this one on its own, but these four work exactly the same way. So I have three repairs that are due today. If I double click on that, it is going to bring me to a list of those three repairs. It shows me the ID, the customer name, the ETA, the current status, and if I'm using uh, repair locations, it'll tell me what location it's currently sitting in. If you double click on any one of these, it brings you to the actual job. I have the option of checking boxes and bringing up an actual service list, which is the same list you'll get when you do a find. So again, I can view these by photo if I wanted to. I can print a list, I can export it, I can do whatever I'd like. Instead of double clicking, you can hit see service and it does the same thing, it opens up the repair record. But you'll notice you are in the repair record. I can do anything that I want with this. So if this just walked out of the shop and I was looking at the list screen, I can mark it as done right here. I can make my changes. So again, the only way you can open up this repair is if you have the ability to edit repairs. Also from the screen, I can actually get to the customer record. So if I just found out that this job's not gonna be done, I can go right to the customer and say, hey Lenny, just to let you know I talked to John, your job is not gonna be done until tomorrow, I'm gonna update the ETA, and you should be able to come in and pick it up tomorrow. 
you are going to get the same thing for custom jobs, exact same list, except when you double click on the job, it's going to bring you to the customer job instead of the repair job. And like I said before, these are all the same. So when I do special order, same exact options. Again, once I double click on this, it brings me to the actual special order record. And then lastly, appraisals. Same exact list is going to come up, same options are going to be there. And again, the biggest difference in this is that when we click on the appraisal, it is going to bring us to the actual appraisal. So now if I have an appraiser on hand in-house that's doing these, all they have to do to see if they have anything due today is bring this up. If they're open, they can actually open up that appraisal right from here. And they can actually write the appraisal and mark it as done and get everything done right from the screen without having to leave it and going anywhere else. <clears throat> so those four, four boxes, repair, custom, special order, and appraisal, all work exactly the same bringing you directly to that job when you double click on it. The last box here is a little different. This is job tasks. Now I have three repairs that are due today, but I have five tasks that are due today. So a task is the individual things on the job. So this is telling me this part of this job is due today. So when I bring that up, this is the task it's talking about. It's not running off the ETA for the job. The only way you'll ever get this box to show is if you are going into task details and setting individual ETAs on the tasks. <clears throat> if you're assigning those tasks to associates, when you narrow your calendar to an associate, their job tasks will show. So if you're predefining all of the tasks for each jeweler, the jeweler can actually come into the calendar and see all the tasks that they need to do today. Not the jobs that are due, but the things, the parts of the job that they have to get done today. <clears throat> the last row is all of your overdues. Now, the very first time you open up the calendar, if you've been using the edge for a long time and people weren't necessarily doing things correctly in the beginning, you may have a lot of overdue jobs. Okay, if a job has not been picked up in one way or another, this it's going to show as overdue. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is no magic wand to wave to close out all 282 of those jobs because I don't know what happened with them. There may be money on some, there may be paid off on some, but just never picked up. There's taxes involved in certain states with, with repairs. We don't know whether you pay the taxes or not. If you mark them as picked up, they're going to charge tax today. So this is going to be a list of all things that need to be cleaned up if they're really old. <clears throat> you will also get a list of the ones that are really overdue. So all of these are, were due this week, and they just haven't been done yet. The nice thing about this list is if I have a list of overdue and I'm using locations, I can actually say, all right, just show me the ones that are at John's bench that are overdue. So now I have a list. If I check John's jobs and I hit see service list, I can hit print list, hand it to him and say, these are the jobs that need to be done. Even better, I could change it to photo view first and then print it. <coughs> This screen gives you the same options as repair due does. The only difference is these are the ones that are actually due today. These are the ones that were due all before today that are not marked as done yet. We're gonna have the same thing for custom. We're gonna have the same thing for special orders. We're gonna have the same thing for appraisals. The overdue job is the ones that haven't been completed yet. I'm not going to open the rest of those, just so you know. Then you have one more overdue tile for all your jobs, and that's going to be overdue repair pickup, overdue special order pickup, overdue appraisal pickup, and if I had them, overdue custom pickup. These are the jobs that have been marked as done or have been completed in the edge, but the customer has not come in to pick it up. 
So that's going to give you a list of the jobs that you've completed the customer hasn't come in. You get the same list itself, ID, customer, email, phone, location. So you're getting email and phone on this one because now we want you to know how to contact them. Again, you have the ability of sorting. So if I only wanted the customers that had an email on file, I can do that. And when I come back, I only have a list of the customers that have emails. So I can click on that and I can say, just like with birthdays and anniversaries, email the customer. And I can jot a little email and say, hey, just to let you know, your repair is still sitting here and it's been done. <clears throat> I can also bring up a list. So this is a list of those jobs that are on that screen. I can view, I can print, I can export, I can do check boxes. I can edit by double click and I double click on it, or I can print the list. <laughs> I can go to the notify list. Right from the notify list, if I see its text, I can open up that job. <laughs> Excuse me. And from the supervisor option, oops, my screen paused there. Sorry about that, guys. Try that again. From the supervisor menu, I can send resend, which will actually send the text again, letting them know their job is done. For the phone ones, the phone is right here. I can pick up the phone and call. And if I completed this call, I can say call complete, and it's going to let me know that I made that call. The notification, the texts, when you go in, you will always have the option of resend notification. And if I did, When this screen updates, it would update to notification completed. You also have the ability to open up the job. So if you double click, again, that's the same as hitting C service or going to the customer's record by hitting C custom. You will get the same exact options for jobs, for overdue repair pickups, overdue special order pickups, overdue appraisal pickups, and if I had them, overdue custom pickups. <clears throat> the last thing that's going to show on a calendar is appointments. So if you have appointments for today, they're going to be right down in the date and time that they need to be. Right from the calendar, you can create an appointment. So if I had an appointment at 3 o'clock, I could double click on that. I could say who it's for, who it's with, how we're contacting them, and I could create that appointment right from the calendar. I don't need to go somewhere else to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to go back and bring up our panel here, and we're going to just narrow it to Tom. And now what it's going to do is it's going to show all the birthdays and anniversary where Tom is the last transaction associate. It's going to narrow down the stored tests to only the ones assigned to Tom. And all of the jobs are going to narrow down to only the jobs that Tom took in. So these are all the things that you should be following up on. If you've been in the previous webinars this week, we talked about clientele using the automated tasks. Well, not only did those tasks get set, but they got put on the calendar. And when Tom narrows his calendar to him, he is getting all those follow-up tasks that he needs to do to follow up with his customers for clientele purposes. So the calendar is one of the things in the edge where you really don't have to do anything to make it work. You can choose what things you see, but once they're done, all you have to do is open up the calendar and everything is there. So using associate tasks, automated tasks together with calendar, set your associates up to know everything they need to do today besides working with the new people coming in. Gives them reasons to follow up, gives them the reason to chase down those repairs, appraisals, custom and special orders, and they can even follow up with the ones that are due today to make sure they're gonna get done today. So instead of having to follow up later on and say, sorry, it's late, they can call today and say, you know what, it's gonna take a little bit longer, it'll be due tomorrow, it'll be done tomorrow. Now, one very last thing on the calendar. This little button up here is an open window, and all that does is that pops it out of the edge. So that gives me a separate window for my calendar. The reason this is neat and handy is that once it's in its own window, you can minimize it. 
So if I'm at point of sale and I was taking in a repair or doing a custom job, and I want to know when should my next due date be. If I go down to the bottom and my calendar is open, I can just click on the calendar and I can say, you know, show me a week and I can look at next week. Right now, I have nothing due next week because if I did, they would show up here. So I can see how many jobs are due each day of the week just by opening the calendar. You're not doing anything else to make that happen. As soon as you set an ETA on something, that sets it on the calendar. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything that I have on the calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it for questions and answers. So again, if you have a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand, or you could type your question in the box. All right, doesn't look like there's any questions. So I'm just gonna let you know there is two more webinars for the day. There is the, so the question is, does it send you notifications like on birthdays if they are that day? Um, if you're asking, does it send an associated notification to let them know there's a birthday? No, it's just on the calendar. Does it send anything directly to the customer? No, you would have to do that. The calendar is letting you know who it is so you can take action off of it. And again, the last two webinars for today are how to host a virtual event and the care plan webinar at 2.30. Hopefully you guys will take advantage of those. And again, like I said, all the webinars that were done this week are being recorded. You should get the email Monday or Tuesday with the links to all of the topical webinars that were done this week. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon.